Hey guys, this is Insurance and Finance Input Management Special Live. Today we have two very special guests, Christian and Tobias from IBM, and we are going to talk today about input management and why this can move millions, if not billions. The big question is, who are Christian and why should you call them and what to expect from this show? Let me start first. Um, I'm Robin. I'm running this show. And you can call us when you have uh, topics with uh, strategy or marketing. Um, and from this show, you can expect a deep dive into input management. That Christian, when should people call you? They should actually call us when we when they need automation or digitization uh, in their processes in insurances. And what is what to expect from the show? To be here? Yeah, from the show, we will definitely, you can expect definitely some nice use cases. So real world examples, how we do that. And you can expect some um, numbers, what you can, uh, what you, what savings you can achieve with input management, which new processes uh, you can establish with input management. So this is going to be interesting. Okay, let's talk use cases because you know, let's theory is great, plans are greater, but use cases are the best things that are actually happening in real life. Um, and especially, I had a sneak preview into your presentation. Um, especially, you brought us also some number. What does it really, really mean? So let's dive deep in. Let's dive dive deep into that. <laughs> All right, what's this? Ah, that's uh, one of our latest offering, actually. it's uh, We call it the counter offer, and it's actually very simple. It's, uh, like you see, three clicks away for a counter offer, where you use it. You sit at home at your table. You make you open the app. You're making three pic uh, a picture of your old uh, insurance contract. You beam it to us. We calculate. Uh, we OCR it, digitize it, uh, and take all the relevant numbers out and produce a counter offer, a new insurance contract for you and beam it back to you within a couple of seconds, ready to sign. But what does it have to do with input management? So, so how does it work concretely? How does it work? Um, the input management is uh, the magic marble at the back. So the app digitizes uh, the contract, the paper, you send it to us and our input management at the back is doing an OCR, ICR, so uh, extracting the relevant information, which contract is it, uh, what is covered, uh, you name it, all the relevant facts that all we right. use as a base to calculate the counter. Contract. So instead of going to an aggregator where I need to type it all in myself, instead of, you know, torturing my agent or broker to do that for me, I, as an insurer, can go to my um, to my clients, for example, provide them this service inside uh, my app or provide this app to them and say, you know, why don't you do a small um, picture of your of the contracts of our competitor? We all know, uh, at least in Central Europe, that most insured people have contracts with a lot of different insurer. I think the average uh, quota in Germany is 1.6 contracts per company per person with 11 contracts in uh, overall, which is like super scattered. So the opportunity is that I, as an insurer, can say, why am you trust me with your health insurance? Why don't you actually, you know, make a picture of all the other contracts and we try to do a nice counter offer? Uh, didn't understand it in that way. Yes, exactly. So it's uh, usable standalone. It can be integrated in other apps or being integrated in uh, insurance companies' environments. Exactly. Cool, cool. Um, do you have another uh, use case for us today? Many. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you wanted to go. I'm sorry, I was thinking. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, a use case about uh, care claims that's from public health insurance. Um, so if you just look at the large green numbers, what can be achieved? Um, yeah, and for the care, care claims, this client uh, actually was able to do all this input management with 50% complete automation. What does it mean? So 
So this client receives 13,000 care invoices a day, completely unstructured from completely different care providers could be a hospital, could be a care station just around the corner. They all have different formats and uh, we extract all the data from these uh, care claims which are needed to automate the business processes. So, so this can like, be, yeah. Sorry, it's like a total nightmare. You get 13,000 uh, pieces of data mm -hmm. a day, unstructured in different formats and you need to figure mm -hmm. out how to process it. I mean, it's like, 13,000 a day, it's like in 10 days, I know I'm not a, a field medal uh, you know, candidate, it's like 130, it's like hundreds of thousands of uh, entries uh, each month, millions a year, it's like not nothing, it's like gigantic a lot. So, um, so, so, so what, what did you do then? How did that work? Yeah, uh, imagine you would have to type in all the data that you need to check these uh, invoices. And that's exactly what they have to do as insurance companies. So we automate that. Uh, we automatically read all the, uh, all the fields, all the t uh, line items which are on the invoice. And we automate uh, and we have a fully automated process in the background. And that's the second, uh, last, uh, the second number here, 85%, almost 85% of the whole process is automated. And what does it mean from a client perspective? Client uh, uh, wants, uh, sends an invoice to the insurance company because he wants money back. And then of course it makes a huge difference whether it takes weeks or it takes one or two days until yeah. he has the money on his account. And this is the most important saving for the client was really get this uh, um, recognition by the clients that this is such a fast process. In I addition to, of course, studies saving. On that. I'm, I'm sorry for interrupting. I think there are actually studies on that that show um, the, uh, that there is a correlation between time uh, goes by with a claim and a claim paid. Um, and I think that makes a huge, huge difference especially where in, if you have like um, in, in the healthcare space. Super exciting. I see your clients save 3 million a year and 10 years at 30 million. I think that's worthwhile to at least consider. Um, super interesting. Um, um, yeah, super interesting. And um, you brought us something else? Yes. Another interesting example. Um, we have uh, in our input management, uh, we have AI modules uh, to even recognize uh, handwritten documents. I mean, handwritten is still in forms, for example, available daily at insurances. All the forms that are filled in are mostly handwritten. So we can recognize, extract all that with our system as well. But Christian, really, does it really still happen that people send handwritten stuff to insurers and banks and other large institutions? Yes, it's, I think, 15 to 20 percent of all incoming documents at a health insurance, depends if it's a private or public health insurance, is still uh, handwritten content or partially handwritten content, for example, a form. Yeah. That you have to fill in. I can tell you a funny story. I just uh, I'm interacting with a bank, my favorite bank. I really love you guys. Don't don't get you know get annoyed by me. Um, and it's like they send you a form. I uh, filled in the form with a computer, but I sent the form back. The firewall says my contact at the bank cannot receive it, so I need now need to print out the form. The person gets it as paper and types it in back into a system. It's insane, um, but at least a little bit better than handwriting. But it, funnily enough, I actually recall a lot of forms um, from claims or even applications in the recent years that I filled out by hand, but I wasn't thinking about how actually the insurer is going to process that. And I know around the world that it's still uh, in a lot of cases the case. But the big question is, what does the technology do? Does it really scan it and is able to understand it and extract the information? Yes, it uh, under, understands, extract the handwritten, not only uh, single characters yeah. or, or numbers, uh, the whole text, uh, and not only in German, uh, we able to understand, extract different languages. Everything in Europe, we're starting now with Chinese, with Arabic. Wow. So it works in different countries and dimensions, yeah. I have to but not, 
I have to be honest, um, I'm pretty happy that this technology did not exist 15 years ago, because if you look at your historic <laughs> example there with the church books, probably, uh, I actually, as a history student, uh, typed, uh, read uh, church books uh, for history project. Shout out to Professor Georg Fertig. Um, and, uh, and you probably would have made me unemployed. So thank you very much for developing this, you know, later stage in life. Um, you brought us another uh, use case. Shall we jump to that? Maybe one more point on this. Uh, which is, uh, I think, relevant because uh, we're not using this only for uh, the daily business to extract forms. We're also using this to re-digitize archives. What do you mean? Uh, re-digitize archives means uh, most of the archives at uh, companies are just images. So all the content that's on all the images is not usable for everything you need for cognitive or prevention prediction, for example. So with this technology, we take all the images out and provide the content of each single page for everything oh, further. What is the value of that? Sorry? But what is the value of that, of providing, you know, re-digitalizing archives? Well, data scientists are excited because all of a sudden they get, uh, they get access to information which is just hidden in behind images in their image archive. And they, get, uh, they can... Uh, ask whatever question they want on uh, on historical data, which they do, do not have, which are just yeah on images. I mean, what I think so it's, it's super full exciting. New world. If, if you think about it in the healthcare space, I mean, you can do like other correlation between sicknesses, other correlation between certain uh, hospitals or doctors and the successful you know recovery. I mean, there are a million of questions that are super relevant for the insurance industry because hey, we're good at pay paying out claims. But what's even better is helping our clients not even have claims. Good for us, good for our combined ratio, uh, but good for our clients too, who don't have the hassle, don't have the claims. So I think it's a gigantic thing, but uh, not easy to implement for sure. Uh, the, the benefits are huge. That's yeah. that's the, the the main thing, especially in the health insurance sector. Like you say, uh, the health insurances more and more want to become health managers, highly yeah. personalized individual offerings to each uh, insured person. And if you want to do that, uh, especially into the future, uh, you should learn from the past. And that's what we provide, the history to be able to do such things. And perhaps, uh, Robin, Robin, I wouldn't say it's not that easy to, uh, to implement. Uh, I think uh, we have a solution for that. And uh, that's something Christian can show in a minute, I guess. When we come to our factory, where we actually have a solution to get this implement, uh, implemented very, very quickly and very, very okay, simple. No, curious. You curious? Yeah, let's go, <laughs> let's go to the next example because I think that's also super uh, exciting because we are talking about a lot of volume. We are talking about of a long term relationship between you guys and this client. Uh, a lot of great numbers here. Let's talk about these numbers. Yeah, maybe uh, start from uh, the beginning. We uh, providing this for a, a health insurance, a public health insurance, uh, me which means everything the insurance receives on paper, fax, email, web uh, is processed in our so-called input management factory. Okay. And it's uh, not little amount. As you see, there are 60 million images per year. Uh, the system has to recognize over 900 document types, different document types. So to classify that, extract all the relevant data and uh, providing them uh, through the whole day. And the shift is from 6.30 in the morning until uh, 7.30 in the evening. So we are mission critical uh, to keep the insurance up and running and uh, getting the process uh, running. And uh, we're doing this uh, over, like I said, over all channels uh, for uh, the next 10 years for wow. this insurance company. Wow, super interesting. Yeah, perhaps what, 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 Robin, what mission critical means, actually what happens if our input management system is unavailable, uh, unavailable or does not work, then basically this means that the client can, uh, or our insurance client can send several thousand people just home. 
Yeah, or what does it mean to the if you have an application process in sales or if you have, an, you know, you're in sales, you're selling a lot of uh, policies and then your applications don't get processed or uh, if, if it's still, you know, in classical input management mm -hmm. or B, uh, when you are a client and you have a claim uh, or an institution or whatever it is, you cannot um, actually, you know, get what, 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 what exactly. you desire. And I think that's something that, you know, you know, you get... I think the market forgives you this for from time to time, but if you are constant, constantly behind, I think it's a big damage in uh, in um, uh, in your reputation, and uh, actually you can actually distinguish yourself from 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 your competitors. But the big question everybody is asking him or herself currently is, of course, sounds great. I'd love to have it, but is it really really so easy to implement? And how does it actually work? It's very simple to implement. I mean, uh, it's uh, input management. Most uh, companies have something, but uh, to take it over in the in the input management factory is a short period uh, of transition. Yeah. And then we are able uh, to to operate it, to run it, uh, and uh, provide all the data the, the clients need. Cool. Let's let's maybe let's show it a little bit to to everybody. Um, so, um, where would you position actually uh, the, the input management, and what what kind of system that does it require? Yeah, we always call the input management actually the the, the big doorkeeper uh, at a at the insurance. Everything that uh, gets provided to there doesn't matter which channel. Uh, the input management receives it, norms it, and uh, classifies it. That's what we call it. So do I have a invoice? Do I have a address change? Do I have a new bank account that was sent in? So the norming, extracting all the data to uh, reach a high automation level in the insurance itself. So it's in the front, the huge uh, gatekeeper. And uh, the more you can extract and automate already in step one, the cheaper it is also for, health, uh, for an insurance. Uh, to process these contents. Cool. All right, but I think you also allow us a sneak preview in your in your system, and and after that we will go deep into the how do you actually set it up. Um, so, how does that look here, like, and um, how, how how are the details, especially all the nerds watching right now? Yeah, perhaps uh, a, a little bit more detailed look in our factory. Yeah, what we call input management factory is actually something uh, as a cloud-based offering. Cloud-based not because we want to build everything on the cloud, uh, which is just a side effect. Now, the, actually, the, the idea is input management is something which is not specific for clients. Every insurance client needs yeah. uh, some sort of input management. And obviously, since the ultimate target of input management is extract data from images, this has nothing to do with insurances. Yeah. So it's not their core business to type data from images. They don't want to be busy with that. So that was the, the major idea of uh, having an input management factory, which is a, a, a platform to provide services for several clients. And uh, yeah, we have this uh, platform now in place for, for several years. Uh, what you can see that it takes, as we said, uh, several input channels, could be scanned uh, Im uh, in images, could be email, fax, whatever. Mobile applications, of course, wherever you receive documents, you can send that to the input management factory and the input management factory uses that specific technology to extract data and yeah. to classify. So first thing is we classify, we figure out what is this all about. And second thing, when we, once we figure out what this is all about, we extract the data in very detail, as you saw in, the, in the, our use cases. What we deliver to the client is basically the, the images and of the documents and all the extracted data. And then the client can, of course, start automating all their business processes. And they don't have to type uh, key data from images anymore, which is a huge simplification for them. And I think also it makes things easier for the subject matter expert working at an insurer. It relieves a lot of pain and a lot of work that's actually not so necessary. Actually, you can focus on generating value for the client or uh, uh, working more, working more for less, I think is, 
is music in the ear of all decision makers uh, around the industry. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Big question uh, I have, of course, what are the counter arguments? I mean, you are out there in the market, you're pushing input management, um, but what are the big uh, counter arguments uh, in, in the market? I would be super interested in that. Yeah, let me start. I think first counter argument is, of course, the change management required. So input management is nothing they can say just, okay, from, from today to, to tomorrow, I will just implement input management. It's no problem because we just send it to the factory and get the data back. Um, basically, you have to, to look at your own subject matter experts and the tools they are using in their backend systems. And you have also have to see how these tools have to be adjusted. So there's technology thing, uh, thing you have to do. There's also some uh, changes in the way people work. And most people might be happy if they get rid of typing data into whatever tools they use. I mean, I would be happy. Uh, everybody would be happy. But no, no, um, so for some people, that's really a change uh, of, of the way they are thinking. So you need professional change management to do that. Yeah. Um, on, uh, yeah. And it's also something for the clients. The clients are, of course, happy if you have like, throughput times are um, um, much faster. So for the clients, that's something they they are happy with. But yes, you need change management. I have another question. Another question that pops in my mind. I mean, we're talking about data. We're talking about cloud. We're talking about super sensitive stuff. You had even examples from the health insurance industry. What about privacy, uh, GDPR, and all these you know data things? Big issue. Yeah, the holy data, uh, the the treasure of the insurance. Uh, but we uh, we are able to uh, provide or process fully GDPR compliant. We process in Germany. Nothing goes outside um, Europe. So uh, it's also certified, uh, certified our input management factory. So we are allowed and able to process health and sensible uh, data. All right. I imagine decision makers watching right now. I once had a pitch where the decision maker afterwards told me, Robin, uh, I had only one question. I had two things running through my mind when I watched your pitch. One was, I want to have it. And the second is, it's going to cost me a lot. And uh, I think the big question is, um, when, 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 when you get invited to a pitch as IBM, I think a lot of people think, Mensch, uh, or wow, isn't that super expensive? Um, what, what do you say to that? Just to you know, call out the elephant in the room. <laughs> um, we have different scenarios uh, to, to, to start on the one hand. And uh, it's, it, it's worth implementing. I, I give you a, a, a very simple example. Uh, we showed you that handwriting. Uh, just with that, uh, insurances save, even if they're highly automated already, up to 20% of their uh, correction service. So the use case is quite simple uh, in, cal in calculation. Uh, what do I save and what does it need to implement? Uh, and I mean, uh, implementation is, is, uh, can be e easy, can be simple. If you start with uh, very simple um, processes, where you basically, what do you have to do? You just have to send the documents to the input management factory and you have to receive the data. It's not that complicated. So we, get, we, we, we have several clients and scenarios where we start in, in such simple processes and then we extend the system and uh, realize much more savings, process by okay. process. So, so input management, uh, a project with you guys start below a billion, so uh, not, not, not everybody needs to you know, <laughs> uh, squeeze together everything. And I, I think that's important to understand that you have the opportunity to start small, to test it out, to have you know, a just simple setup. Sometimes organizations are not ready for the crazy AI stuff. Um, so I think that's super important to actually uh, underline and talk about, you know, pricing. You know, we are in Central Europe don't like to do this, but I think it's important to do it from, one, from time to time. Big question is how to start. And what I would be curious if you could run us also a little bit through this 10-year project you, you have there. Um, you know, how to start? What are the, the steps to, if you really say, okay, I want actually to have the full benefits of, a, uh, of an input management run by you guys? I think you can start uh, 
in, in the first step uh, saying we, we're taking over the whole digitization uh, and uh, the, the processing of that, including also the whole operation of the input management, which is uh, more efficient, more sca scalable uh, than the solution, for example, at the client side itself. And uh, based on that, we can uh, raise the automation rate. We can also help with additional correction service. So over the time, doing the op optimization as well. Or uh, as another example, uh, you start with just one type of document. Uh, we had that a couple times now uh, through COVID, where it was uh, COVID-specific forms that came up. So we had a very short ramp-up time with a huge effect already uh, in the input management factory. And uh, coming back to this 10-year uh, project that we do, that's actually how uh, we started there. We're taking in the first step this input management away and start running it uh, with the operations uh, for him. And then on the next step, uh, going into the optimization. Optimization in the operation, optimization in the recognition, and then step by step getting it even better than it is already with new technologies, with new AI models, for example, to automate also the, the whole operation service, learning from the past, how long was the system running, for example, uh, last year on Monday, January, mm. in January, uh, where's the peak, when, when does the system uh, not, is not needed anymore, so that not people have to look at the operation, the system is optimizing himself. And that then saves cost again. Yes. So a good yes. way to start is, is to get definitely in contact with us, <laughs> because there are so there there are, there are so many ways uh, where, uh, how you can implement input management and what you can do around this, and uh, this is definitely a way to go. Um, not just uh, not just a one-time project. It's, it's it's a way you start when you when you think how how do you do input management in your um, company? How do you see input management? Uh, what uh, what use you can do may uh, take out of such pl platform approach? Yeah. So what I take away uh, so far, because uh, time flies, we're already through with our half hour. Guys, if you're out there, have a question for input management in Europe, Center Europe, DAC region, but also beyond, don't hesitate to contact Christian and Tobias, both on LinkedIn, available. We put also the contacts into the show notes. Um, but what I take away is, um, the funny thing is, I actually led once projects in input management. So I really still feel the pain of, I don't know, we need to keep this channel open because we get five faxes a year or something like that. And it drives you crazy when you know what kind of machinery actually is is is, is there and how, uh, how many thousands of... Um, uh, letters you get and how to you know uh, to reduce the the manual effort by the way also super um, uh, um, failure intensive can tell you a funny story I actually quit an insurer uh, two policies at one insurer with one uh, one notice of quitting it and the insurer was not able to actually process it it just quit one and the other uh, department said no we never received a cancellation of the contract I'm like guys it's one letter I sent you and did you see the the complexity of this simple thing, you know, a person sending a letter, quitting two contracts in one letter, and this also freaks out a multi-billion dollar insurer. I'm not saying going to say who it was. I think you guys know who it might be. And um, all kidding aside, I think that's something super to, to, to understand. Uh, input management is, is super cost intensive. Uh, when you don't do it, you can leverage a lot. You can uh, make uh, efficiencies. But what I also take away from today, it's not only about cutting costs long term, which can be hundreds of millions of dollars if you look at a 10 year, 20 year uh, record for one company, but also to think what kind of digital products and service can we build on top of the knowledge we actually gather when we structure all of it. And also if we look at our archives and we uh, uh, mine some digital gold there, you know, no pun intended to the to the crypto and NFT markets, which might be another topics we can talk about. All right. The big question uh, to you guys is, um, you shared a lot of your knowledge. Thank you very much. Also some numbers. I always love that. Is there anything the insurance community can do for you, uh, Tobias? 
Um, yes, simply get in touch, get feedback. That's uh, feedback is, is the greatest gift. All right, and Christian, what can they do for you? What they can do for us is uh, visit us at www.inputmanagementfactory.com to get more input, and we can help them in automation. All right, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much out there, everybody, for asking, watching, liking, sharing, and commenting. We'll be back with our show soon. Don't be a stranger, and don't forget to hit that like button.